And with us now is one of Audi's product managers, Anthony Folk. Anthony, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate that. Thanks for inviting me. I know you're jumping up here at the last minute, so I don't mean to put you in the hot seat. No, but, no problem. Uh, but I'm curious. So you, one thing we were just talking about before uh, the, the camera started, you guys have doubled your sales in yep. five years. That's impressive. Yeah, so it's been uh, a, a big growth period for Audi in the U.S. I mean, worldwide, we sold 1.8 million cars. And in the U.S., we've actually doubled our sales in the past five years. So five years ago, we sold 100,000 cars. And this year, we reached the 200,000 car milestone per, per year. And we hope to keep that growth going. And sure. it's, a, it's a big thing for us and also for our dealers and, and for our customers. The more cars that are on the road, they see these. They, they, they see that um, Audi is a growing brand with a lot of good technology and, and design. And, um, yeah, we have a very good um, momentum going here in the U.S. Yeah, and I, I know you don't necessarily or specifically deal with it, but I want to kind of throw you that, that, that question. But uh, what is this? What is the long-term strategy for the, for the R8? I mean, we're talking about all these, you know, this melding of what is efficient and what is that fun, powerful, you know, how, how do we get those things together? And does that, you see the R8 as something yep. that can continue to live in that world? Yeah, I mean, the, the R8, I mean, right now we have the, the second generation of the R8, completely new car, um, just coming out this spring in the U.S. and it's come out in, in the rest of the world. And this is a very emotional car. There will always be uh, room in the auto industry for exciting, emotional cars mm -hmm. that, are, that are a lot of fun to drive. And the R8 right now, of course, whenever you take a look, it's all aluminum car, what the pre first generation was also. Everything that Audi does includes a, an eye on efficiency and the emotional you know, attachment to, to driving. So um, the R8, the, this one comes out, of course, there are efficiencies um, in there when it comes to aerodynamics, the engine with um, cylinder shutdown and mm -hmm. um, start stop. And there are a lot of efficiency systems that comes in, come in there. Also within the, uh, the drive select, there's always a way to make a car efficient and have it be a lot of fun to drive. So um, as, as far as long-term future of the R8, uh, people will want to have fun cars to drive. Sure. As we get more and more into autonomous or driver-assisted cars, you have um, situations where you don't want to be driving when you're stuck in traffic or something like that. But you'll, people will always, I think, want to be able to have something fun to drive and, and to kind of uh, distract yourself from the stressful world that we have. Yeah. You can get in a fun sports car and go have fun for a while. That's a good, it's a great e escape to have. Yeah. You know, that stressful yep. day and you just, you hit that open road and you just have yourself a little fun. Yep. You're right, that, that shouldn't go anywhere, or at least we hope it doesn't go yeah. anywhere. But when we talk about, uh, there's a lot of different things when it goes to, you know, we're talking about wearables and, and, and all this new technology and autonomous cars, you even mentioned that, yep. like, what, what, what is the, the next step beyond this interaction? How are we going to see ourselves interacting with these cars in the future? Yeah, I mean, a great example is we have uh, a seating um, buck or example of what the, on our stand right now, the example of what the future for our ergonomic uh, uh, design would be with OLED curved um, instrument cluster mm -hmm. and a new um, type of haptic feedback. And in the future, you'll be able to have your your phone or your, your smartwatch connected with your, your car and you'll be able to see like, a phone call pops up in the, in the screen here and you want it to be on the instrument cluster while you, so it's in your line of sight, you should be able to pull and, and swipe it over and it'll move from screen to screen. So the making that interaction more integrated and more simplistic is really the way um, to go in the future. And one of the things that Audi's been doing even since the A8 that came out uh, four years ago, we now have, most cars have at least, um, at least two screens, if not three, if you have a head-up display. Yeah. And there's a way that you can set up, just like on your computer, you can set up the way you want the screens and the information presented to you, and then that way you're most comfortable of knowing exactly where the information is in your car. And in the future, with this um, design that we have on our stand, it really shows what the next step of that is and how you can look to the future of how integrated these are all going to be. You know, with the... The Q7 that's come out um, just went on sale last week, all new generation. With that, we now have a completely new generation of Audi Connect uh, that has, keeps, keeps you completely connected. New app that gives you access to your car on your phone and on your smartwatch. Almost every aspect of the car you can check where it is, when it needs service. Um, you can have alerts if your kids are driving the car too late yeah. at night or too fast, oh, all no. these types of things. So, oh, no. um, you know, that, that's the, that's the sec kind of the big second generation of Aud Audi Connect. And then, um, and that brings this integration. Yeah, sure, I get alerts about my, my car now mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the ones that I set to, to let me know what's happening. 
Um, and you know, that's only going to become even more integrated in the, f in the future. Does that affect the way you guys, uh, you know, you go about designing the interior of the cars? If we're thinking about, you know, the future of an autonomous car, people won't be paying attention. They're going to be texting or they're going to be watching movies or something. Does that change the way that you guys have to look at how do we now redesign the interior of a car? Because it's not always going to be about people facing forward, perhaps. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's always one of the main um, focuses of ergonomics. First of all, making sure that it's easy um, to keep focused on the driving situations. I mean, like I mentioned with the new Q7, they designed the ergonomics specifically to have the least eye refocusing um, within our model line so that you're between the um, MMI display or the nav display, the instrument cluster and the head up display, you're very little refocus when you're looking out to the road. Always having that information um, right in your, in your line of sight. And then you'll see in our future concepts, having the ability to move information that might be on one screen here up to this screen so that it's easier to use or vice versa. If you don't need the information so much up here, you can move it, move it down. Um, ergonomics is very, very important to mm -hmm. your driving experience and your ability to kind of relax and focus on the driving when you need to. And then as more and more um, capabilities come out when it comes to driver assistance and autonomous, then you'll be able to move between those two. But some of the things for me, Audi, I think, has always been very good at things like uh, a side assist or lane assist we have. It's very simple. If you want to turn your lane assist to help you stay in your lane, just push the end of the turn signal stop. Yeah. You don't have to go searching for a button or anything like that. You want to turn your blind spot protector, there's just a button there. You can turn it on. There's no searching through menus or anything. And those are small ergonomic things that people don't really think about, but it's very direct, very easy to mm -hmm. get to, and it doesn't take you much time to, to find these things. And, and that takes the strain off the driver so that you can be more focused. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, when we talk about these things, are we, are we looking at, first of all, by the way, uh, beautiful concept car, that uh, the hydrogen concept yep. car. That was gorgeous to see that yep. today. And, and I love the fact that as the show goes on, we're getting less and less from what could be the most futuristic thing that we might not ever see, but we're now starting to see things that that is very could be that could be a car yeah. that's on the road. Yep. Obviously, you know we might not see the hydrogen tomorrow. We're going to see it sometime in the future. But these technologies that we're seeing, and you guys have had for years, and you're hearing these other manufacturers announce like we now have you know lane change assist. It's like yeah. it's been here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> are we seeing some of the stuff? I mean, are these the steps we're taking towards 10, 15, 20 years from now? Like, are we placing the right steps in front of us so that we do have yeah. completely driverless cars, things like that? I mean, well, I mean, I, I think you've hit on kind of two different areas there. But I mean, first of all, the H-Tron that's there is kind of, it's, it's a proof of concept that we could take our future electric vehicle and use that platform for sure. more than one. You could either plug it in or you could have um, a hydrogen and use that platform to have an electric, uh, electric vehicle that has, you know, it's two motors, it's e E Quattro, so it's all-wheel drive, driven with the motors. And it also brings, um, you know, this concept shows some of the autonomous driving functions that will be coming to the next generation A8 that comes out in just a couple of short years. So uh, it's not so far out in the future. This is kind of saying this is what's coming in the next couple of years. It's fairly, you know, close in. And this is a show car to show some of these technologies that will come. And there will be autonomous driving as we get these pilots. So as as sensors become stronger, and we have, with this vehicle, we're showing this, um, oh, it's called ZFast. So it's one small computer box that's about the size of a, um, of a tablet, mm -hmm. and that is the computer for all of the driver assistance. So it's not, you know, a few years ago, we had big PCs in the back of test right. cars, and now this whole, everything you need to run an autonomous car is in, in a processor the size of a, of a tablet. So that means you can get this into future cars, and it, it's coming pretty soon. Yeah. Besides, and maybe this is kind of a, this is a big, a pretty broad question, but I'm curious, beyond the technology, how do you, could you see Audi setting themselves apart when it comes to this, uh, you know, when the driver's no longer driving the car? Is there a way to set yourself apart from somebody else other than, well, I don't know, you, you tell me. Yeah, I mean, p part of it is, of course, the, the luxury and the design. The design always sets, sets you apart in the interior. Au Audi's well known for the the, f the craftsmanship within our interiors. When there's leather in the car, it's real leather. If there's wood, it's r it's real. You can see the fit and finish mm -hmm. within these. It, it's it's fairly easy in the auto industry to kind of hide some of these things. But our engineers always they always go out of their way to show something. With if you you can look in different pieces of the interior, the exterior, how they want to prove the 
expertise and the manufacturing and the quality of, of Audis. That's why when you get inside, it really feels very luxurious. Same design is always very important. And also one of the things is, is when you do want to drive, it's a lot of fun to drive. Mm -hmm. So you want something that is engaging and um, you know connected and also um, easy to live with on a, on a daily basis. Yeah. So, uh, the brands evolve, of course, mm -hmm. but I think some of the things that will always be will be design, I innovation, always going to the next level of, of technology to make your driving experience more efficient, uh, safer, and some more fun. So it's not just calling my car up and having it pick me up, but it's how good it looks when it shows up and picks yeah, me up. Yeah, sure, and, and how easy thing. that is. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and when you get in, does it feel like something you would have uh, wanted to to sit around you. I mean, it's how well you integrate into the car. It's not something you sit on top of. It's something you sit in and, and you feel integrated into. I mean, there's a lot of aspects of design to make you feel part of the car. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, some of the interesting things for me, the new Q7, uh, the way the dashboard's uh, designed, the designers wanted a very they wanted a, a dashboard to look like a wing or felt like a wing. And when you get in this, you say, oh, okay, that's that's nice. And, and what it does, though, is the way they designed it, it makes you feel like you're sitting up higher. And when you get in the car, like, wow, it, it really does. And the car feels bigger. I mean, these are things that, that you don't know why. Right. But when you're in there, it, it just feels right. So yeah. design and ergonomics, you know, it, it's one of the main um, aspects of, of design o overall, you know, on the interior. To really set you guys apart. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Anthony, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much yeah. for taking the time to, to chat Enjoyed with us today. It. Absolutely.